Good evening, everybody. Uh, well, it's evening in South Africa. If you're in the US, it's probably late morning sometime. Uh, welcome to the stream. We uh, are just reading all the note times from uh, Vatsum. Uh, this overloading seems to be causing quite a problem. Uh, we are obviously quite a few guys that are going to fly here. As you can see in the background there, the guys are coming into view. Um, they've basically told us now that we also need to stay off Unicom and only use it when we really need to. So in flight we need to be off of it and be on some random frequency. I don't think these servers can handle the punch it's expected to, to take just now. So. Um, Anyway, uh, we're going to do our best. Jet noise and aerial. Good uh, morning to you guys. Yes, uh, from LA. That's fantastic to have you guys here. Uh, good evening in Germany then. Um, we've got some guys from Switzerland, from Seattle area in the US, from Great Britain, etc. that are flying with us. And then obviously Angel, uh, the instigator of this flight, uh, is actually in Lima, Peru, where we are going to take off from. And I must say, he's given us one hell of a challenge. Um, I flew uh, manual hand-flown circuits earlier at Cusco. That airport is more than 10,000 feet um, above sea level. It is amazing to see the Zebo act uh, appropriately, uh, very sluggishly. Um, the moment you land, your altitude, your cabin altitude horn goes off. Um, it's it's amazing how it all comes together there and how different it is and how the aircraft actually struggles to operate in, in the landing and takeoff phases, uh, you know, at that altitude with the weights, um, you know, that we're carrying. So um, it's an interesting approach that you guys are going to see. I'm going to look very carefully at the VNAV um, operations. Uh, <laughs> the mountainous area that we're going to have to go through to land is incredible. Um, I, I'm actually sitting here with kind of sweaty palms. I, I'm not sure I've done a, an actual flight like this in, in an environment like this in, in quite some time. Um, it's going to be fun. So thank you guys for joining us. Please feel free to make your comments, your suggestions, and obviously ask your questions. Um, I'm going to start... Uh, Actually, let's, let's do this. I've, I've started programming the system already. So I've put the actual flight in. If you look below the stream, in the description, I've got the basic ATC flight plan. But I just want to bring your attention uh, to the finer detail. It took me a while once I was in the aircraft to actually figure it out. One of the things that we can do when we approach Cusco is we can do a north or a south approach. And it took me a while to just figure that out because when we do the export from um, Navigraph, I'll show you that as well. Let me get that. Let's start with that. Then you guys get the actual picture in mind. Um. Right, there we go. All right, so that's where we're at on the left and we then come to this side over there. You have a silly situation where if you add an arrival, which is slightly hidden there, it's a little green line behind, you know, the orange there, um, which is the dark one trolley arrival. If you add that and then you add your RNAV approach, they actually overlap. So I first of all had to go and uh, cut and paste the flight plan in the FMC to actually get rid of the dark one Charlie but that was my clue as to how to set up this FMC because just by uh, going here to flights and saying export it didn't give me all the information it in fact gave me um, up to that point over there which is darky and then it started somewhere here that I think it was that way point five five six or something it was called I can't remember it's, uh, it's a number thing so so there was a lot of missing information and so it took me a while to actually figure out that when you actually program 
the FMC, you've got to be very, very sure that you take the appropriate transition, the appropriate star, um, obviously the RNAV that we're going to do, and then when you get to the legs page, um, you have to cut and paste to make this thing fit, because otherwise it just doesn't work. So this is the end of the handiwork then. As we step through, you'll see it actually now flies exactly as Navigraph showed it to us. I'm just going to zoom in a little bit more. Let's just zoom out a little bit more. So there's the, the turn that we're going to do. Now this is all mountains around us. There's no escape really. If you don't, if you don't pay attention, you, you'll die. Um, that's how easy that is. So this is going to be a lot of concentration that's going to have to go into this. Make sure that this aircraft flies exactly as it should. And if you look at the actual restrictions, there's a lot of them. So this is going to be a fun uh, flight. And I'm so glad you guys are here with me so we can enjoy it together. Hello, Marius. Hello, David. Nice to have you guys here as well. Um, I managed to get a slot on Vatsim and I see a couple of the other guys have already joined in already. Uh, I don't know if you guys, if some of you want to fly with you also welcome. Um, the load that we said earlier is a bit much so we're just going to stick to the no dams Vatsim sent out and we'll stay off one to two days and we'll eight uh, unless we really have to be there. Um, so, right, without any further ado, let's the rest set up. Let's get these packs on there. In actual fact, you know what? I don't think I actually called the fuel truck. Never did that. Yeah, never did that. Let's get that going quickly. Hey Joe, welcome. Nice to have you here. This is going to be a fun flight, my friend. Um, I don't know why the bar at the top, this information bar, is saying that we've actually completed the flight. I'm hoping once we start moving, it's going to show that we still have to fly the flight, but we can also switch it off if he doesn't want to play ball with us. So, while we are waiting on the field to be in the correct um, quantity, I'm just going to start adding some of the missing pieces of information here. Right, our fuel needs to be at 6.9, so we're just going to take our time to just wait that it gets in place. That's one thing I really forgot to do. Right, we're going to fly at flight level 250 according to the OFP. Um, wait, when I did the manual circuits with the Zebo earlier there at Cusco, the uh, cloud base was 17,000 feet, and the airport is like it's ten and a half thousand feet so and those mountains are high it was fun it was a it was a challenge hi Bob good evening we are waiting we might as well have a look around um the link to the sceneries guys that i am using i don't have author in this area but the sceneries at least it is in the description below the video so if you guys would like to download the scenery please uh, follow those links 
uh, the one scenery for the final airport um, has got a problem with a library uh, so you're just gonna have to google the library to just get it it's it's part of a totally different piece of scenery I don't know why the guys didn't bother to put it in there for us oops that's too far Right, I'm going to, well, we also wait, just enable Discord for us so that guys can start chipping in. Are you guys uh, coming along, setting up your aircraft? Yeah, I'm almost ready. It's just uh, not sure what frequency to, to contact the, the controllers, but except that, I'm pretty much ready. Okay, I didn't notice. I just see now that there is a controller online now. 135.00. Yeah. Uh, did you guys see the note time about 122.8? Yep. Okay. I don't know whether I've got the nerve. <laughs> well, yeah. Is the guy still online? He's online. Affirmative. And that's a terrifying looking approach. Yeah. Did you fix it? Because um, it took me a minute or two to just fix it so that I got the complete arc, you know, the whole approach. Checking. I was just showing the guys on stream here that um, I had to really think about it and go and program that FMC properly because there is an overlap between your uh, star and the actual RNAV approach. So you've got to put the star in, but then afterwards kind of overwrite it with the RNAV approach. Um, and, you, and I'm taking the northern approach. Uh, so there's a northern and a southern approach um, and, and transition We point. are expecting circle to land at 10, right? Uh, negative. I've got 28. Okay. Um, let me just check the weather there. I, I think in terms of the weather, you can land in any side. And if there is no ATC, I, I'm not going to bother if you want to land from the other side. Uh, the wind is variable at three knots, so there is no wind there. You can land from either side, uh, Francisco. Okay, okay, perfect. I'll, uh, I'll decide when I'm up there. Hey, Mersat. Um, Bob, Uncle John was around. I don't see him online now. He's gone to the AFK room. He's probably gone to fetch some coffee or something. I hope he comes back. Is center still on? Yes. Shall we start with clearances or... Uh, you guys can do that. I'm just going to um, mute on my side to do the same then. I better just get a piece of paper and a pen to start writing down what I'm given. Let's see if we can raise this guy. Lima Center, good morning, Peruvian 810, uh, requesting IFR clearance to Cusco as filed. A 
Oh, you know what? I never started the audio for Watson plugin. Clean forgot about that. Let's keep that going. Silly me. Oh, now it wants to update. Let's do that quick. I'm, I was flying with X-Pilot the last couple of days and it just worked marvelously for me. Um, I, we all know there's a couple of glitches with one or two small little things, but um, it, it was okay. And uh, tonight I'm trying with Swift and now AUV needs to be run at the same time. Ah, it seems I'm on. Lima Center, good morning, uh, Peruvian 810 with you, requesting IFR clearance to Cusco Asphalt. Do you guys get any response from the center? Uh, you don't no. get response either. Uh, none of you get response on 19.7. 13500. 19.7. Well, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm PMing the controller. He asked me to go to 19.7. Okay, but he then. He can't hear me for some reason. Okay, but then so he needs to, to change. On, yeah. One nine point seven. If he can hear you guys and not me, then it's my audio in that has a problem. Otherwise, it's his audio out that has. So one one nine point seven. Alex, one one nine point seven. Sorry. I've just asked for a radio check, and uh, he heard me five by five one one nine decimal seven zero. Thank you. Lima Center, Peruvian 810, radio I'll check. Let's go and ask for clearance. Yeah, Peru 2257, okay. I like it near something now. Hey, round trip. Hello, Ryan. Uh, Neil, unless they changed something in the last five days, um, it definitely works. Uh, you can check my other videos. Uh, there's usually traffic displayed. Now, I don't understand. This guy's not talking. Lima Center, Peruvian 810, radio check. Um, 175, how do you use me? Yeah, there seems to be a problem. If this continues, I'm okay. just going to disconnect. Tell all the others traffic to contact me on frequency 118 decimal 1 Can you confirm the frequency 118.1? That's correct, 118.1 Roger, Copper 737 Lima Center, Peruvian 810, radio check 3425 Click my frequency I'm with you in 2 minutes with your clearance No, this is driving me nuts Control requesting Radio check. Bye bye. 
way that he get his eat this. What the hell? Lima Control, uh, this is uh, Peruvian 810, radio check. Thank you sir, Peruvian 810 requesting IFR clearance to Cusco Asphalt. This is a confusing situation. Okay, while well, we're all waiting for him to make up his mind what he wants to do, let's continue to check that everything is fine. Zero fuel weight and gross weight should be fine. Let's just double check. Yep, 100%. Alright, so what is our actual transition altitude here? Could be 18, Let's just check. It's supposed to be 10,000. Right, in one limit. Peruvian 810 Ok, American Trust American 21 I am with you in 2 minutes with your clearance That's not me Take off uh, flaps 5 But I'm not going to bother with all the advanced stuff I'm just going to get out of here as soon as I can Right, and the landing altitude is the shocker, so we are going to go to 10,900. American 
transfer to one with bat correct. This advice when ready to push and start. Connect one zero one eight at the moment. Okay, so I'm sitting here wondering if this oak actually heard me request my IFR clearance. He said 5 5 when I talked to him the first time. So I'm going to give him 30 seconds and I'm going to call again. Lima Center, Peruvian 810, requesting IFR clearance to Cusco as filed. Well, if he's speaking to me, I can't understand him. Lima Center, this is Peruvian 810, do you copy? If you're talking to Peruvian 810, you'll have to speak English, sir, please. This is just a call sign. I'm not from this area. Peruvian 810 Okay, Peruvian 810, my thing, you can see I have no idea what he's saying So guess what? I'm not gonna bother with this nonsense This is highly irritating And unfortunately, I'm just going to disconnect Uh, 
I don't get why it's so easy to, for the other guys to get their clearances and he just doesn't seem to be able to give to me. Mic off. Mic on. Right, so what I'm going to do is, I've disconnected from Matsum, it's no use trying to flog a dead horse, I'm uh, simply going to uh, fly without it, and then once I leave his airspace I will reconnect and then we'll have fun with all the rest of the traffic as we're landing, so I'm just going to fly as programmed and as expected. Sorry about that guys, it's uh, one of those things, but can't work like that. Right, so let's quickly see if everything is in place. It seems to be, so we can actually uh, request the pushback. Ground complete. Tau is driving up. Hey Kevin, welcome, welcome. I see, the, complete. Break. I see the guys here are talking about servers going off at 17, ah, oh, sorry, 1900 Zulu. Uh, seems that some need to fix a couple of things. Ah, interesting. Right, flight controls are okay, we're waiting for flaps 5 and the green light there. That will disconnect it, and that bus team has been removed. And signal on the right. We'll see you next time, and uh, have a safe flight. Thank you. Um, Kevin, the audio is much better, but you still get the one or two um, people that just are not either technically 
savvy enough or just don't care to use improper hardware and bad settings on the Windows side of things. Um, we've had a couple of instances where I was just hacking my head. Um, the guys don't read the manuals, they don't set it up properly and we've already had uh, the pleasure of seeing one or two guys complain about the codec didn't change anything and you just smile and wave. Right, I'm also not going to bother with that restriction now, so let's get going. Right, I'm sorry I can't show you guys the other traffic right now, but once we're in the end, this ATC goes away or we leave his airspace. Um, I'll obviously go back on Batsum if possible, if the server hasn't gone off yet, and then we can show you guys. Right, green light, and we've got 11 knots of wind. Okay, let's get going. Guys, I'm sorry I disconnected, but uh, I mean, I've had multiple tries at trying to get this guy to just speak to me and then give me my clearance that didn't work, so I just went offline. It's no use in flogging a dead horse. That's so weird. Yeah, he was helping all of you guys, but for me, he was just ignoring. I kept on calling, kept on calling, and eventually he said, no, he reads me 5-5, five, five, and then he starts speaking Spanish, and uh, I mean, I don't know where I stand with him, so I just disconnected. I really, really don't have time for that nonsense. What I will I do... Sorry, Alex, what I will do is once he either goes away or we leave his airspace, I'll go try and go back online if the servers are still online, you know, but that's i'm not gonna sit around wait for him yeah i think he's having issues with his audio software and he's trying to do some fancy stuff and not quite knowing how to work it and it's yeah causing a lot of issues yeah because he's one controller doing the the new uh, multi-frequency where one controller can have multi-frequencies so he's both using doing center and radar and this and lima approach whatever and I think he's having yeah I heard that yeah it's crazy um, he could just as well have stuck to just being centered and just you know continuing normally guys did you hear on the frequency Nico or me negative uh, what frequency are you on 119.7 no I'm on 111.1 that's why I'm not not hearing you I'm only hearing Francisco who's on the same frequency as I So that's has this new thing where one controller can work multiple frequencies but they still act as a separate frequencies for the pilot yeah like what they do on pilot age uh, these guys are unfortunately not professionals okay the cabin is secured have a good flight Anyway, I'm not going to let it bother me. I'm looking so forward to this flight. I can't tell you. I'm excited. I just want to get going. Same here, same here. I mean, if it goes to, to crap, I just disconnect from that. Um... Yeah, that's all I did. But I'm still, I'm already at the holding point almost. So I'll get going just now. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Kevin, um, I, I actually didn't even bother to really look at that, but um, all you need to do is make sure that you set your Zebo up to be able to handle the three places, and then doesn't matter, you know, so just make sure you get that frequency right. Uh, Good or thing the I didn't push back on the taxiway there, Francisco, otherwise you would have pushed into me. Right, when we get close, in actual fact, you know what, let's go to weather on that one and terrain on this one. We're going to do it a little bit differently today, because when we get to those mountains, boy, you'll see how it lights up. Ah, uh, wrong one. I don't need you now anymore. Alright, so we set. Let's go. Okay, guys, I'm taking off, so 
we'll see you guys on the other side. Ignace is letting one, the landing on Unicom. On runway, one, five. Get up. Four hundred. Come on, a gear down. Well, up and off, and then off the oh. Okay, it just sounds like my pushback guy. Okay? One thousand. Hey, Rainer. Nice to see you again. Good evening. This is promising to be an exciting flight at the end and with all these mountains and high altitudes and stuff I am thoroughly looking forward to it and there I bump my throttle. Let's pull it back to idle and let the Zebo take over, there you go. My throttles won't interfere again. Guys, I hope you've had a good weekend thus far. I know some of you are only starting your Saturday. Um, hey, George, nice to see you. We've had some fun here. Yeah? We were again without electricity for a number of hours today. Fun living in this place. And I'm so glad that we can do this flight now. I was really looking forward to it. Rainer, that is called Benny Overlay. I see he doesn't like South America for some reason. It's not giving the correct uh, line there for, for the actual flight because it shows we already arrived at the destination. But it's Benny Overlay and it, it basically integrates um, to the broadcasting software. I can't see that in the cockpit. It's unavailable to me in the flight sim. It's just all for the broadcasting side of things. In actual fact, you know what, while I'm talking about it, let's quickly close it. Let's see if we close it and restart it, if it actually fixes itself. Okay, keep it off, then restart this engine. Alright. 
Uh -uh. E oh, hang on a second. Hang on. This airport had a different name. Let me get the correct name. I think it doesn't recognize the name. Uh, that's why it's using an old database. SBIM is what it was called. There you go. If you use the old previous IKO, it recognizes it because the database is old. Obviously, there you go. Now it's working. Interesting. George, please explain. You got me. It sounds like it's supposed to be a joke, but I've got a curious feeling that you, you are actually uh, very serious and you know something that I don't know. Um, Rainer, while, while we're sitting here doing nothing, let me drag it onto screen, the screen for you. This is what the interface looks like where it gets controlled from. And uh, you obviously put your departure and your arrival in there. That's obviously reading from some database somewhere which isn't in line with the latest ICO. Um, you obviously give your airline information. This is, this is basically everything that you see on the top and then it obviously does some calculations on its own. Um, it interfaces with uh, XP UI PC back into the sim. And uh, then basically it's a whole bunch of HTML coding and stuff that you draw into the broadcasting software and you just put it in the right place make it look nice and there you go ah ok no George no no might be an accent problem I might have pronounced something incorrectly or funny So let's see what this looks like. Clouds, clouds and clouds. Yeah, I love it. I love it. This, this is a very nice area to fly. I don't fly frequently in South America, I must be honest. Um, but when I do fly here, yeah, it, it's always been Angel that's been asking me, come here, come here. Because he uh, also designed part of some of the scenery that I've flown to and from uh, on some of my other streams and so on. Great guy. And um, this was... This flight came into being after we had the Faro challenge where we flew into Faro one evening on another stream and uh, had great fun and joy and excitement and he said you know what I've got a, a challenge for you you need to come fly this and boy oh boy this is going to be a challenge are you guys okay you are so quiet yeah, yeah, yeah. I was just talking about how the controller fucked up by forgetting <laughs> to give me an altitude clearance, and I just checked with him before takeoff if, because everybody else has one, and he finally gave me one. But it's it's South America is like this, you know. It's just different. Yeah, I know, I know, I know. But just remember, you're being broadcast, okay? Yeah, yeah. I'm being very polite, am I not? <laughs> yeah. Uh, Kevin. Um, I prefer. So are you like, uh, do, Nico? Do you have George Collins seven words that you cannot say in broadcast? No. No, I I don't have any major rules. I think I've got three words in my block list for typing, but in terms of verbal, it's difficult. I can't stop you from saying certain words. Ah, oh, freak it! Ah, <laughs> <laughs> fuck stakes. 
Ja, nou. Kap voor dummy. <laughs> ja, let's not speak Afrikaans en German. Um, That's Swiss German, man. <laughs> yeah. Probably means the same thing. <laughs> it sounds the same, yeah. Um, Kevin, sorry. Uh, Alex obviously is just chatting there. Um, I prefer using XPilot. The only reason I'm not using XPilot is with the latest update, all my VATSIM traffic are underground. Um, but I prefer XPilot way above Swift just because of its simplicity. It's easy to get going, easy to use. Uh, compared to Swift, you don't need a PhD, so I really prefer that. It's also, um, it seems to be lighter on resources, so I'm not sure if that helps you. That's part of the answer you were looking for, but I, I actually prefer using it. And next time I fly here, I will have orthos. I never had time to make orthos, so sorry about that. This is just stock standard explain now. Yes, Kevin, um, as far as I understand, it's the same developer, so it will look the same, it will feel the same, it will work the same. Um, for me, it does, and uh, I actually just prefer it. It's also, in terms of the CSLs, the only thing I wish they would fix, and uh, I honestly didn't check in this latest version, but I would love to be able to copy a path to my CSLs and paste it into the plugin. Um, in the one where I did the initial setup, I had to physically type the path and it became a bit hairy. That's the only negative comment I have about it. So if they will just allow us to copy and paste, it will be much better. <laughs> I'm busy reading the Discord messages here. The guys are still going on about the controller. I'm glad I disconnected. I'm sorry for the, um, what do we call it, entertainment value of Atsum not, not being part of this flight, but I couldn't care at this point in time. I can't struggle with that guy, really. Look at these mountains, look we're at 25,000 feet, look how close they are to us, I mean this is crazy, these things are high, they're right below us. I need to change my views again. Something like that. Vikram, um, if your parking brake is off and you do not have your chocks in place, then it should work. But a lot of guys forget to remove the chocks and then the aircraft doesn't move. That's the one or two things it could be. I'm not sure what else to suggest because I'm not there when you try it. But that's usually the case. Just check your chocks. 
you go into your uh, configuration uh, let's see where it's at I can't remember all these things off, uh, out of memory all the time uh, hardware alright this is one parking brake remove chocks my one is set to off you can put your one to on so the moment that your parking brakes uh, you step on your toe brakes or you release the parking brake the chocks will also go away that's one of the nice places you can look at um, chocks on startup that's the other one mine is always set to on maybe put yours to off see if that makes a difference that's all the couple of things that I can just think of very quickly have you tried a different airport maybe maybe there's something wrong with the scenery um, I'm gonna quickly try get hold of Uncle John while I'm thinking about him just now again let's see if we can get him Let's just minimize that. Where is Uncle John? Beckram, the other thing I want to ask is if you move your throttles, uh, do you actually see that there's thrust generated and uh, that the engines are actually spooling up? Can you actually see that? Does it work for you? Okay, I've sent Uncle John some messages. Let's see if he can actually join us.
George, there you go, there's the FMC. We've got 194 nautical miles for top of descent and um, to the actual airport we've got 244. The fun starts when we basically go on to the star um, because that is an R nav and it goes in between the mountains. So I'm waiting for that. Um, Vikram, there's no point in me sending you my version of the Zebo. It's the same that Zebo has. So, I mean, we share a Google Drive. I take it from the same place he puts it, um, which means that you just need to re-download it, delete your whole Zebo folder, save if you need to save some settings or liveries or something. Just use my install guide. If you follow my install guide, you know, download the new one, extract it and try again. It must work. I mean, it works for everybody else. So if it doesn't, you're going to have to start troubleshooting on your system or in your scenery or something is blocking it from working. George, can I offer you a lolly or a biscuit or something, um, you know, while we're doing the ride here? I know it's long. It's going to take a while. Um, I, I think the, the galley should be stocked. You guys are welcome to go help yourself to some cool drinks or whatever. Same as on stream, it's Skymatics. Um, let me see if I can see you there. Done, you're in. Cool, George. I can just imagine what this place must look like if I've got authors here. I'll try to see in the week if I can make some authors. Okay, guys, Uncle John just sent me a message. He apologizes for not being here. He does not say he's not coming, so he might still make his appearance, but um, yeah, he just apologizes. I hope he comes. Oh, yes, yeah, for sure. Um, Vikram, Vikram, yes, that's another good tip. Start with the 172. Start the flight there. Once you're at the apron and explain is fully loaded, then change over to the Zebo. That solves 95% of most people's problems. Uh, it doesn't matter how stubborn they are and how much they deny it. That's the truth. It works. I had one guy today laugh at me for saying I need to start that way. Can't help it. Sorry.
Ja, Vikram, I, I think you need to you need to try different sceneries, go to different places. Um, I, I know there has been one or two things, uh, you know, sceneries that have caused problems because the guys use the wrong resistance factor. There's another thing I'm just thinking about now. Uh, yeah, under your realism setting, have a look here. This is something that I personally don't like um, because after you land, sometimes the aircraft will not move and that's related to this tire blown advanced setting so my one is off finish i don't mess around with it because i've done one or two streams where the aircraft just stops it just doesn't go any further and it doesn't matter how soft or how hard you land if that thing if that script breaks uh, you're not going anywhere so do yourself a favor and just switch that off by default That's also a good one. Yeah, turn off runway follow terrain contour. You, know? you don't need it. Um, I switch it on when I want to be fancy and I just want to fly in places where I know that the slopes aren't too bad. Um, and then you fly into uh, Kilo Bravo November Alpha in the USA. What's that? Nashville, I think. Boy, oh boy, you can't have that on in that airport you'll die it's crazy and that was one of the airports where i got stuck the one night in one of my streams i just couldn't move so if you've got that setting off as well that i just showed you last there's no reason it shouldn't work Oh, it is bumpy here. Oh, yep. I don't have a bumpy flight. I'm happy. Where are you? Uh, where, where are you guys flying uh, approximately? If you can give me some indication. Because I am already... What is this? Uh, yeah, it's now... SPA is the next... How can that be? Well, I'm already almost at Darky, but it's it's saying something else on the Indy. Can't really see. It's double writing. Let's switch off this airport. What's that? You're way ahead of us, Nico. I'm nine miles from Paco. Right. Okay, yeah, I'm at Alpha Yankee Alpha already. Ah, yeah. <laughs> George, yeah. Tell them they shouldn't have eaten that much the, the evening before the flight. Vikram, another thing, another thing, and this goes for everybody on stream listening. Um, I don't know why, but this seems to be a absolute pattern. If you use an old version of WinRAR that's not up to date, the guys get corruptions when they extract the zip file. Please don't use WinRAR if you don't keep it up to date. Uh, the better option would be to go for 7-zip anyway. Um, so just bear that in mind uh, for some reason and I gave up on it myself personally I just don't use it anymore I moved completely away from it I'm using 7-zip now and uh, for some reason it seems to just work every time whereas there was you know often failures and I, I see that in support many many times the guys use WinRAR it extracts incorrectly And like I said, if you want to use it, just make sure it's up to date. Oh, and the other thing. 
Look, I mean, all these things are published in my install installation guide anyway. Please make sure your C++ 2017 is up to date. If C++ 2017 is not in your system, you are going to have issues. It, the Zebo depends on it. I hope you get it right. Right, 116 nautical miles. My latest meta into Cusco says that there's a bird desert on 28. Have you guys? I have not seen birds and deer in explain in years. Ah, I see it. Yeah, I've just gone to check it. Uh, that's a that's some joke. Right, so dump win RAR or update it. If it works, it works. Otherwise, please use 7 zip. Um, I don't have issues with 7 zip, and my one is at least 6 months old. Um, I, I don't even check for updates on 7 zip. So please, yeah, try that. Yep, George, agree with you. I never had problems. 7 zip just works. I've never asked. Zebo, what he uses, he's probably using 7 zip or something. Probably, I don't know. Well, I have to ask. Well, this is interesting, but I'm not going to change my approach now. I'm going to stick to 28, but the wind is significantly changed. Um, it was variable 3 knots when we took off, it's currently 1 to 0 at 10 knots. But I'm sticking to my guns. If it goes uh, 15 knots or higher, I will have to change because of airframe limitations. But I'm going to stick to 28 for now. I see we are in this guy's airspace all the way so I'm not even going to get a chance to go online until I'm on the ground but that's fine then we'll watch these guys come in and see how they land. Let me see if he's online, hold on. Mm, he's not online. Um, I haven't spoken to him in a few days. Uh, I presume he's working hard on the next version um, and so on. And like you say, everybody deserves a break now and then. I mean, realistically speaking, he's been burning the candles on both sides. So he really deserves a bit of a rest. Ooh, that sounds like a big story. Oh. I would hate to get the bird strike in that position. 
Rainer, that's actually a very, very good idea to get the updater. It's on the Zebo forum, Vikram. You can just go to Google, type in explain uh, Zebo updater search. It's the first hit you're going to get. Just download it. Um, it works very well in updating. Then you don't even need seven or when there are nothing. You don't have to do anything manually anymore. Um, it's just when you have to do a full install, when it goes to a full version, um, you have to download the zip file. You can still use the updated to update it, but it will not download the full file for you. Um, whereas with the updates, it actually downloads the updates and extract and install everything for you. Yeah, look on my channel. Uh, you'll find it there as well. There's a whole long video about the installation. Uh, Angel, it will go to cold and dark if your preferences is set cold and dark and it will spawn at the closest airport. It will not spawn in the air. So you cannot reload the Zebo in the air. It's going to go to the closest airport to where you are in whatever mode your explain is set up to be. Um, I'll check the size of the Zebo mod quickly. Let me just go into Google there. Uh, 1.73 gigabyte is the size. Same Angel, are you having issues now? Sure, but that's not good. Alright, let me. Yeah, um, its effective size is 1.73 in the zip. I've just checked the zip. I'm I'm actually in the Google Drive now. Um, don't know how your Windows will display that, but the effective size is 1.73. Let me quickly show you this uh, display capture. Come on, there you go. This is the updater. So there's a wizard that comes up Matthias the creator of it Slav Bass he made a really good job of this um, he he gives a little wizard that you can follow if you know what you're doing you basically tell where the mod should be installed or where it is installed once you've put the full installation in place um, your updates uh, the archives the zip files goes into a specific place which is my downloads folder um, and then you specify what it needs to back up once it does a full um, install this is for the full install not for the updates and then what happens is when you open it there's a little cloud that comes up there right about there where the mouse is you click on the cloud and it gives you options you can then select download and install and it will then obviously um, give you uh, that facility and then obviously as you can see as I click there it also it tells you what's been done it basically reads the readme and it tells you the change log that's there and this thing is marvelous. It, um, I do some of the beta support um, and beta testing on it and I don't have issues. It just works. <laughs> Rainer, I like your style. <laughs> I like your style. <laughs> Angel, no, no issue. Oh, okay, Angel. Well, don't disconnect. Don't do silly things now. Just fly, land, enjoy it with us, and then, you know, in between the next leg, you can troubleshoot that quickly. Right, while we are here, we've got 58 nautical miles to prep, so let me get all the necessary goodies up on my other screen. And Well, Angel, I'm glad we're flying in Peru. It's a beautiful country. Absolutely. 
and it's interesting because the controllers are different, you know, I'm, I'm just thinking about this, you experience different controllers, different ways of controlling, of doing things, of giving clearances, it's really, really... You know guys, here the Fear Lima, uh, there is not a lot of people uh, devoted. Um, Angel, I think tonight was a bit rough on me personally but I think you and I must actually fly a few more flights together yeah we don't necessarily need to do a group flight um, but it would be nice to get to know the guys and just get the practice same here you know I would love to come fly there more often if it can uh, motivate your friends to to um, be online more often for that and then get some more practice I would really love Oh, thank you very much, guys. Thank you yeah. very much because yes, we we here don't have the fear active so much. Uh, maybe some time to time, Sundays in the night, and no more. Uh, usually we fly here off, uh, online, but without control, and that's why the the guys are not so proficient. Maybe we can say, but yeah. they don't have so much practice. Of course, no, it makes a big difference. Um, so guys on stream if you heard that if you can support this um, Vatsum division by all means try it sometime yeah it's a country full of uh, Innsbruck approaches so that's yeah right. yeah challenges upon challenges and you have not seen the surprise we have for you oh yeah Right, I'm not going to bother with those things, it's going to be a challenge enough, so we're just going to keep it simple. Right, okay, what well, are guys, we just I disconnected to? at the airport, I misunderstood an instruction and was told off and that was enough for me to disconnect. Yeah, don't let it put you off, just continue flying offline. Yes, I am doing, but... Uh, Understood, I think. Yeah, I don't worry. I was expecting a certain flow, and when it didn't happen, I assumed I was cleared to push and start. This is amazing, I'm busy reading this um, approach chart. Uh, we're going to descend to 2700 on the star, um, or on that on approach actually. Uh, and then the uh, go around altitude is 210. Wow. Plastic investigator, I. Great stuff, nice having you on board, thank you. Right, okay, I'm going to go down to the legs page as well. Let's see what the legs tells us. 15, 4, 12, 7, that's correct. Okay. Sorry about that. I had to mute myself real quick to call on um, ATC. No worries. We have a glide path of 2.8 degrees, I see. Okay. Interesting. This is going to be fun. Yeah, Francisco was asking if you can do the runway 10 circling. I'm like, no way.
I told him earlier he's welcome to take any of the um, runways because the wind was variable. Now we've got one to zero at ten knots, so just bear that in mind. Thank goodness for the terrain radar. I would hate to go back 50 years without that and then come into this approach and you've got this blanket of cloud here and you have no idea what's waiting for you. I mean, can you imagine? No GPS, nothing, and you have to fly an approach like this. I don't think that would be fun, if at all possible. They would probably have some restriction, you know, only fly in when there's no cloud or something, I don't know. Yeah, George, those waypoints, this is an RNP approach. I mean, this thing is um, very, very, very precise. Otherwise, you're going to die. Um, let me just bring this chart on board. Yeah, I see the descent's getting going there. So. Have a look here. Yeah, we're coming in from dark here over there. And then we have to go through the mountains and then turn, come in that way and land. I mean... Yeah, that's part of the challenge. If you look at the map, look at these mountains. And like you saw earlier, they are high. Oh boy, they are high. Guys, I've just started my descent a minute or so ago, and um, it's looking interesting. At some point in time, guys, I think we must go and fly the Queenstown approach in New Zealand again, South Island. Um, I've done a stream on it before, but we must try see if we can do that as a group as well. That's a good one. Oh, well, I love it. I mean, there are so many nice videos about it on YouTube where the guys break through the clouds and go into those valleys. Wow. There is a beautiful real life video of an A330 from Qantas, I think, that is doing that approach. It's amazing how it enters the clouds between the high peaks yeah. and then it appears right uh, aligned with the runway. Uh, guys, I just got uh, the 80s. Uh matter for landing and there's a remark bird hazard runway 28 so watch out for the yeah yeah I saw that Francesco mentioned it earlier okay so this is also one of those rare occasions where um, I'm actually using my speed brakes above 10,000 feet I mean this is a a real special occasion. There's no ways you're gonna fly this approach at an exorbitant speed. I mean, it just doesn't work that way. So we're braking like crazy now.
Right, so according to our ND, the required navigational... Um, oh, now the words left my mind. Performance is 0 0.3. We are currently at 0 0.04, so we are within spec. We can do this. Our speed brake is up. And let's see. Let's keep our eye on it. And this is a excellent test for the VNAV code. My hardware throttles are on idle and this is absolutely the Zebo code flying this VNAV now. Ooh, what is the q and I never checked that. 1030 there you go right let's also quickly look at any indication of minimums there's no indication this is not a normal chart it just doesn't work that way uh, let's have a read Alright, what I'm gonna do is just improvise. Alright, let's just use a radio at 100. If I spot it, I'll change it. Oh, there we go. There we go. Eleven thousand eight hundred. Yeah. Look at this approach. One eight, one seven, one six. Look at that radar altimeter, and now it's just gone past eleven thousand eight hundred. There we go. What a story! Incredible. Um, no, Joe, I, d I didn't have time. There was no electricity in our city for most of the day. So I, d I didn't have time to make orthos. The orthos will come. I'm going to fly this again. I'll stream it again uh, once orthos is done, you know. Look at this. Look at this incredible approach. I'm so glad there are no clouds here that we can actually see this. Wow. Taking a couple of screenshots here. Right, there is the airport in front of us, so... This is amazing. And so I'm just waiting for the glide slope to lift a little bit higher than what we are. So we can intercept it. Then we'll 
Activate the Ian. If it will allow us, come on. Oh, you know what? Now this thing is stopping us. Come on, go down. No point in actually activating approach because look at that we're going to literally turn onto the center line look it's a completely skew we're going to turn onto the center line literally like in five five miles approaching minimums all right so we're going to continue we're not going to minimums worry um but this is a problem for me because we need to stop at some point in time so what i'm going to do is i'm going to disconnect the autopilot And I'm going to just use the diamonds as a guide. All right, so let's get rid of the auto throttle. We are flying by hand now. Let's just do this. Approaching two eight. I now. Right, stop, stop, stop. Just trying to transition to the tiller now. More difficult than usual. I tell you what, guys, you must come and try this high altitude landing with real weather. It is so different, so weird. Wow, this was amazing. Uh, Joseph, more than likely, you will have. Um, guys, I just want to point you to something else. Um, I'm just going to stop here quickly. I'm not online, so I'm not going to bother anybody. This airport is, like we said, it's 10,800. What's the actual altitude? Let me just get that specific altitude for you. Uh, 10,860 feet above sea level. Look, your cabin altitude comes on automatically because we are above 10,000 feet. Thank you, Rainer. So uh, just bear that in mind, and then we're just going to kill the horn so it doesn't drive everybody mad. But just check there. I mean, that altitude horn. I tried to, to calculate the landing, um, you know, the normal landing calculations that we do uh, with Topcat earlier, and it came up with an error every time because the airport is higher than 10,000. It was just absolutely unable. It couldn't give me the landing um, calculations for the aircraft at all. Thank you, George. Coming back to the certification, I bet, I bet that there's not a lot of guys that are certified to land here. And the funny thing about uh, Peru, according to Angel, is that uh, most of the airports are similar in type. There's always some other volcano on the side or a mountain or an altitude or something. So the guys flying in uh, Peru are special guys, eh? Thank you, Bob. Right. Thousand ago. Thousand ago. Right. Thousand ago. Um, the one thing Thousand that ago. I will 
Just account. for my own peace of mind, do Thousand at some account. point in time is just figure out what the correct altitude Thousand must be. Thousand I mean, account. the the twelve thousand seven hundred. I think should have Thousand been eleven thousand eight hundred. That ago. that would have been Thousand a better ago. goal. But Thousand anyway, ago. we'll work that out. No, we Thousand didn't ago. even use. Look, we are above ten thousand. We didn't Thousand even bother to put on ago. the landing lights. We'll we'll take the taxi Thousand for now. Ago. This is funny. Um, let me just change that because that's going to drive me insane. Go away. Right, guys, I've landed. It was awesome. Uh, this is R&B only. Uh, there's no ILS, nothing at this thing. It's absolutely GPS R&B based. And they've got a R&B requirement of 0 0.3. Um, so it's very, very strict. And the Zebo did it at 0 0.03, which I am thoroughly impressed with. I'm going to send uh, Zebo a note, tell him to check this um, some at some time. He needs to see this approach. This was awesome. I, I loved think, it. Uh, Peruvian 20790 ATC is trying to raise you. I'm not sure if you can hear him or not. I'm just going to pick any parking bay anyway. Uh, I'm not familiar with this place. Um, Marius, we can do that just now. I just want to quickly get the parking spot. Uh, okay, there at the back. I'd love to see this replay. Guys, please tell me when you are on the approach. Um, I would love to see you guys land, or at least one or two of you. Andre must be reaching Darky or passing above, maybe reaching Cusco Bor. Mic off. Nope, oh, Andre is already. Joseph, I was hand flying circuits here earlier just for the hell of it. I was like an hour and a half early for the stream and I came and I said, you know, I did hand flown circuits, but I did it the other way around. Um, not the way that we came in just now. It was hair raising, but thrilling. I tell you, it's absolutely wonderful. Um, and the RNP approach now, this is something I'm going to definitely come fly again. Um, we don't need any of those lights. Right, okay, so... I think he's going to understand that as my position. Uh. 
Nico, I just crossed the Darky, so I'm behind uh, Francesco uh, approaching. So I'm I'm on the the very beginning of the Darky North approach. Okay, thank you. I'm having a quick look here. I see where you guys are at. I'm probably gonna miss the first guy, which is probably then Andre, and then I'll probably see you because I've just started a replay. I'm not online, so I won't interfere with you guys. I just want to check this replay. You know, when I when I look at this, we we are flying in a simulator. The guys are flying this in the real world. Have you guys ever just sat and thought how technology has changed the world? I mean, can you imagine flying this aircraft at this speed? The amount of people, the weather, the mountains, everything. Can you just imagine doing this? How cool is it? I love this. <laughs> I bet, I bet they sweat, I bet they sweat. Ryan, welcome back. Um, I already landed, this is a replay, but uh, you're welcome to obviously stick around for that. It was awesome, this was, this was a stunning, stunning approach. And this is the tower view. Guys, if you want to see a different view, please tell me. I just thought it would be dramatic to sit in the tower and watch this plane come in. Oh, you silly upright. Come on, don't do that. Oh man, those buildings. It's lousy.
Wow. Yeah, not the nicest angles. That's terrible, but anyway. Pity those buildings and stuff are in the way. Help, get me out of here. I don't want to do it. <laughs> Yeah, sorry about the um, the angles now. I, I wish I could have given you a better angle. Um, I seem to be sluggish, struggling very much to move. Um, let's do it this way. Um, at altitude, I suppose, but let's see. Yeah, that was cool. That was really nice. Wow. Right, okay. I want to quickly connect to... Um, Vatsum. Now the blinking server is full again. I really dislike Swift, guys. I really, really, really don't like this thing. Every time I connect and disconnect, it throws away all the connection details, and then you've got to try again. And now it tells me all the servers are full, and then you have to put in all the detail again. How silly do you want to be? Uh, all the servers are full. I'm not able to connect. How sad is that? Um, Joe, I've also been using Xpilot and then this morning when we tested this airport quickly me and uncle john we couldn't uh, see each other andrew can you can you copy on uh, discord we um we found that all the aircraft all the traffic was Here underground you, you know so yeah because the cusco is trying to contact you and they can't seem to to, to raise you Ooh, okay 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 let me check Ah, I just made it. I'm online. Okay, guys, what runway are you landing? 28. 28, okay. I've just managed to get online after a lot of struggle. I want to check you guys come in. Um, anyway, Joe. Uh, sorry, I'm speaking in 10 different ways, thinking too much. Um, my personal opinion is I will use Xpilot. I, I just like it much more than I do Swift. Oh, come on. Okay, so the first two of you have landed. I'm on my way in. It's going to be a mess because I think the voice servers are going to come down right as I'm about to. Alex, I am going to fly over Urco board. You enter first because you are a lot lower than me. And I cannot reach uh, center anyway. I am calling, but I have no response. Uh, try text. Should do.
Uh, Joe, as you can see, the traffic here is perfect in Swift. There's no issue. They are all in the right place. Um, there's nothing wrong with the vertical offset that I know of. And I've been using XPilot for quite a number of flights. Um, never had the problem. But the latest update when we ran it this morning put all the traffic underground for us. It was a, a 1.05 or something was the file version. How far are you, um, Alex? I'm uh, inbound. I'm just sitting here wondering, you know, this airport, this whole area is almost 11,000 foot MSL. I wonder how the people live here. I, and I'm not being funny, I'm honest. It's an honest question. Because, I mean, the air is so thin, the oxygen is so little. Oh, and there, there's Alex coming. Okay, George, cool. Enjoy. Thanks for being here. Thanks for visiting, it's always nice to have you here. I have your visual.
Nicely done. Right, Angel, your turn. Totally messed up. I have lost all communication with center, and so I am going visual, manual, everything I can do. But I will land anyway. Uh, I'll have search and rescue waiting and equipment uh, ready to go if you need it. Yeah, I had a bit of a scare because uh, when I switched to approach from uh, BNAV, it steered me right into the mountain, trying to, to get the, the straight approach path from the, the runway. I think I switched to approach too early. So I went just full manual and just hand flew it in. Still managed to get about 200 uh, feet per minute. Excellent. Um, I saw it was coming and I was so tempted to press that approach button and I delayed it and I delayed it. And eventually I just also I took it manually and I just went with it. Yeah, I, I, I did, and I saw it, and I'm like, okay, crap, just disconnect the autopilot and fly there. Okay, Angel, we've got your call sign visual. Too high, too high. I am going to circle. Come on, come on, dive. Okay, we go. <laughs> no, 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 don't listen to me. Do what you have to do. You also circled the land when we did the photo challenge, and then you did a beautiful landing, so you do what you have to do. I wasn't heading direct to Urkos Bor, because I saw that we were going to make a beautiful double landing with Alex, and... He was approaching from north, I was approaching from south. That's why I tried to make a, a longer approach, but anyway, I ended up high. No worries. And my, my horn is already a fire. Quack, quack, quack. Listen. Get it out, man. <laughs> we'll wait for you, we'll wait for you. I, I don't have any rush to kill the stream. The guys that are here seems to be very faithful, so, um, I mean, they can also leave. I, guys, there's no need for you to purposefully stick around, but it's nice to have you here. So, uh, Angel, do what you need to do. We'll wait for you. I know. I have seen this approach a lot of times from the passengers' side, so I think I can handle a manual landing. Excellent. I will do. What was definitely amazing, apart from the obvious geographical situation here, was the amount of power that, that we need to, to put into in order to land. I've never landed with 70 uh, indicating my yes. N1. That yes, was yes. So, so brutal, man. That was, yeah. I was like, what the... F Exactly. Now, I was pushing my throttles, pushing. I, I saw my speed was falling below VREF, and I kept on pushing more and pushing more and pushing more. And also, I looked at it and I said, wow. Exactly. As soon as, soon as I disconnected the other throttles, I pushed a little bit uh, back on the throttle, and I was going really, really slower than I, I, I was supposed to be. So that was really, really awesome. And even, and even taxiing... You really need a lot more trust than when you're yes. yeah, yeah. near the seal. Yep.
Hi Dean, good evening. Uh, just to update you where we are at, we all landed at Cusco in Peru. Uh, this airport is almost 11,000 feet above sea level. And we are waiting for Angel to make his reappearance. Alright, the Batsum has just notified us that the voice servers have been updated. Please restart your client. We're not going to do it right now. Um, so, Angel just did a go around. He was a bit high. We we had a couple of guys land here already. Did you guys get master truck? Yeah, I saw it. And we're literally just waiting for him to land. Then we'll be full house. Uh, some of the guys have disconnected already. Don't know where Alex is. Oh, there is Alex. Ah, he almost snuck in without me seeing him. Check there. There, there he's coming. That's one hell of an approach, Angel. Definitely. Don't land short now. Ah, good. Put it Blow down. my tires. <laughs> That's okay. We didn't see it. We didn't see it. But what we can see, it, it looks like you went off the runway now. Maybe it's just our angle. But you're a great sport, man. Thank you. It's awesome for you to give it another go. Give me a C-17 and I will do... Ooh. <laughs> cool. Oh, this was fun. Guys, I need to get going. Thanks again for the great flight. Hope to see you guys next time. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye bye. Paul? Yes, sir. Are you still flying? Are you coming? No, I got it down. I blew a tire, but um, I got down. Okay. Okay. All right. I missed that one. Uh, well, I was offline. I didn't bother. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah. Back in. Okay. This was a nice challenge, hey guys? It's one to do again for me, certainly. Oh, yeah, for sure. For sure. Did you um, think you were coming in a bit hot, even with the uh, speed brakes on? Um, I, I managed it quite efficiently um, but at one point in time I mean I had to put those speed brakes out and I had to get the gear down uh, sorry now I don't press the button to talk to you sorry um, Paul I had to put the speed brakes up and gear down at one point in time to slow down it was it was really going fast that's the thin air I suppose isn't it yeah yeah um, Dean uh, not for me. It's uh, just after 9 p.m. Yeah, we had a... Yes, it is because of the thing. Uh, a weird day. So I'm going to call it a night. The guys are definitely going to fly. I'm just not going to stream it. So if you want to fly with them, uh, just uh, hop on to Vatsum and go join them. Uh, you're welcome to come to Discord and join up with them as well. Um, but I'm not going to do the second flight. 
Are any of you guys actually going to do the second flight? Because it's getting a bit late for me now. I will. Okay. Thank you, Dean. You too. All right. Well, guys, that's it for me then for now. Um, I'm sorry I didn't have a stream earlier this morning, but difficult if you don't have hey, gentlemen. electricity. Hello, Cody. Um, so I will see you guys. How do? Let me just mute the Discord. Um, I'll see you guys on the next stream as soon as I can, hopefully tomorrow. Thank you so much for joining, and I hope you have a blessed rest of your weekend. Bye for now.